Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a great start to their week. I know that it has been a crazy weekend for us, but uh, we are off and running for this weekend. This is a, a pivotal month for us as we prepare to close out the year um, on so many different fronts. So we are excited about that. And I just want to take a brief moment to talk to you about something that came across my desk, something that I was aware of, and I was trying to determine whether or not I would talk about it or not, but I think that there's enough here uh, for some substance uh, for a learning and teaching experience and hopefully a way to challenge us to do better. Uh, but people um, have been hitting me up about the movie The Harder They Fall, and the issue is uh, primarily, everybody's focused on uh, the character of stagecoach Mary, uh, whose real name was Mary Fields. And if you've ever seen the pictures of stagecoach Mary, then you know that the character was not fitting. But that wasn't the only character uh, that wasn't accurately depicted based off of the images that were available. So why is everybody so concerned about Stagecoach Mary? So we're going to talk about that. Before I get into it, I do want to remind you that we are in the midst of a fundraiser. We definitely need your support for the things we do, not only here on The Black Voice, but in Black Men Lead, uh, our Rite of Passage program for young black boys, and Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, our program for young black girls and young black women, uh, in our research center, which is pivotal for us to develop strategies and programs that help us grow stronger, uh, help us to overcome many of the obstacles that are placed in front of us. And so we definitely need your support. So I am asking that you go to the description box and um, sh look at the different ways that you have available to show your support and do so. And then, no, let's move into it. Uh, this is like so many other uh, things. I, I am a movie uh, fanatic. I love movies. Um, uh, I find so many different things to glean from movies outside of just being entertained, which I like to be entertained. I'm not a person that's dead. Uh, you know, there are things that I like, you know, certain parts of my brain to be stimulated at certain times. Um, so I'm a movie fanatic. So there are these different layers to what I'm about to talk to you about. On a very novel and superficial level, I enjoyed the movie. Um, but I have to admit, uh, when it came to a part of critical analysis and looking at things and thinking about how the movie's going to play out, you know, outside of its cinematic impact, how, what kind of statement is it writing? What kind of impact is it writing? What image is it sending? How does it lay out groundwork for something greater, something better? And all these things are going through my mind. And so I have to admit that uh, when I saw the casting of the movie, and I saw the casting of the movie long before the movie hit. So when I saw the casting of the movie, um, you know, Zazzy Beats, and I'm going like, okay, how does that play into it? And then I start looking at, and, you know, many of the characters I was familiar with, uh, Bass Reeves, Mary Fields, uh, Rufus Buck, I had heard about, I heard about Cherokee Bill. Um, but others I wanted to familiarize myself with more just because of the history behind it because uh, you let them tell the story there were no such things as black cowboys when I started doing my, doing my research I realized that one in four 25 percent that's greater than the population uh, it's better, but 25 percent of cowboys were black so I'm like well, okay Okay, so you start looking into it and you start seeing it and you start recognizing the stories. So uh, let's talk about why the casting for the role of Mary Fields, stagecoach Mary, is so important. Because if you look at it, the defense of the filmmaker and director and the defense of some people who are defending the casting, their argument is that none of the characters were accurately accurately depicted and that's true uh, not only was stagecoach mary not accurately depicted ildris eldra ildris elba's character uh was 
18 years old and light complected and more than likely mixed race and uh, was hung at the age of 18. So uh, Ildris fit none of the phenotypical uh, characteristics of Rufus Buck. Um, so we'll talk about that a little later. Um, Cherokee Bill, another outlaw that was supposedly very vicious, who also died around the age of 18. So these older mature characters that is depicted, you know, and he was also probably, if I'm remembering the picture correctly, more light skin. So in essence, people saying, well, they darken the skin of several brothers and, you know, but they lighten the skin. And see, here lies some of the problems. Well, what you have to understand is there has to be an expectation uh, in a certain sense put on those who are going to take on the uh, gigantic task of bringing forth uh, those who have been left out as far as blacks concerned in any different era. And we're talking now about the time of the Western frontier. Uh, and we're talking about the quote unquote quintessential idea of what cowboys were. And so we know about the Billy the Kids, the Wired Earps, the Doc Holidays, and, and so many others, but we don't hear about, you know, the Rufus Buck gang and, and, and all of the others that were brought out in a movie like this. So in one instance, it's a movie that introduces real life characters, although the stories in the movie are fictional. And here's the problem is the choosing of Zazie, who I have no problem with as an actor, who I have no problem with in, you know, whatever role she may choose. I have a concern in the fact that she's casted in this particular role. While I understand it, I don't agree with it. Now, here's why. There's a stereotypical layout of colorism that flows not only through the black community, but through society. Uh, black and light uh, comes with some benefits, it always has. And there's also a, an idea of what constitutes beauty among blackness. And there's still this idea that the lighter you are, the more attractive you are. Um, regardless of facial features, regardless of blemishes, regardless of anything, it's just simply being light seems to qualify you as beautiful versus uh, all, the, all of the unbelievably beautiful dark-skinned women that roam this earth that are absolutely stunning. The idea has been, you know, you, 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 the Eurocentric idea. So whatever comes closest to the Eurocentric idea of what's beautiful tends to get more play even among blacks. Now, we have to be honest about this. And so what happens is many black women, especially dark-skinned black women, have lived lives being told that they weren't as beautiful as their light-complected sisters. And it comes with a lot of heavy emotional weight. And people don't like to talk about it, but it's something that needs to be talk about, talked about. Because I believe personally that in order to get this film at the level they wanted to get it at, where it was going to go mainstream and not just be a black movie in the sense of generating revenue, they had to have a person who was playing a central role and a love interest of the main character to be what everyone would consider to be attractive. And the way around it was the fictitious, uh, the fictional, uh, the, excuse me, the fictional uh, representation in the movie. So because we're not really telling Stagecoach Mary's true story, we don't have to represent Stagecoach Mary in true representation in imagery. And so what we're going to do is bring in someone that everyone will find attractive. And you, then you have to ask yourself why? 
do we feel that Zazie would automatically be received as attractive across the board? Well, black people, even who black people who are, let's say, unapologetic black, will accept her as black because she, more than likely she's mixed race. So we, you know, we've always been told one drop of blood makes you black, so we accept everybody. So okay, we're going to accept her. Plus, there are a bunch of us that buy into the idea that the Eurocentric features that she possesses, nose and certain other things makes her more beautiful. I tend to uh, disagree. I don't have anything against a pointed nose, but that does not make her more beautiful. Um, now, when you look at the true nature and the true uh, visual depiction of uh, Mary Fields, she's roughly six foot, six foot one, well over 200 pounds, um, had a reputation for fighting, had a reputation for being very tough and rough. Uh, and she had to be because of the job she had. Uh, and she revolutionized the idea of what is in that area because not only was she the first woman, she's the first black woman and she didn't take any mess. So she was tough. And so that idea doesn't bode well for a love interest. So if I want to write in as a love interest, but see the thing is, you got to understand all the writing takes place with an idea of where you're trying to go with it and what you're trying to get through and what you're trying to get accepted. Now from what I understand, the vast majority of the executive production, which is the financing of the film, came from black dollars. But also these black dollars come from people who want to make money back. They don't want to just make a statement. They want to make money. And if we want to make money, we definitely need to diversify the audience. We need to be able to pull in others. Why? Because the chance of making a legitimate amount of money coming solely from black pockets isn't realistic uh, in, in, in cinema. So what do we do? We go out and we sit up and we create a film that will pull an audience, even though it's predominantly black cast and um, you know, all of that, we're going to, we're going to do it this way. So it's written with the idea of what's trying to be done. So the way around it was, we can't tell the real stories. And you also have to understand that this is totally fictional in concept. Anyway, a lot, most of these people never met each other. M many of them never crossed paths. Uh, some of them didn't even exist in the t same time frame when they were doing what they were doing. So to bring them all in one location was in, in one way genius. And I, I can see where it may have a benefit. And I want to talk about the benefit. And then I'm going to close out why this isn't a good, why a lot of focus is po uh, focused on Zazie. But I'm going to tell you why the casting of um, our dark skin Rufus Buck was probably not uh, a good move if you want to really look at how things play out in sense of presentation and stereotypes and how it works. But anyway, now how it could be positive, how this could actually be positive is, the film gives the names of these characters exposure where most people have never heard of or know very little about them. Now their names are gonna become popular. People are gonna be talking about Trudy. People are gonna be talking about Mary Fields. People are gonna be talking about Rufus Butt. People are gonna be talking about Cherokee, Bill, and Beckworth, and, 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 and all of the other characters who were in this, in this uh, movie. And now opens up the 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 the, uh, the gates for black movie makers to come out and make movies that are more biopic in nature, and tell the true story of these individuals because now they have exposure, now they have a name to associate it with it, now they have the intrigue of the audience. That's the positive side: is that you found a way to bring all of these names in and let people know names of people who actually existed even though the story is fictional so i get that that's a positive if it's done now there has there have to be other black filmmakers who can uh get the funding up and get these movies made to tell the true stories and then we even have to now we definitely have to hold them to a higher standard of properly depicting on a visual level who these people were we want to represent them correctly now moving on why is it so important uh, that Zazie was casted uh, so, I mean, in a role of a person that's so diametrically um, different uh, in opposition and appearance uh, to her. It's because of this idea that darkness doesn't represent beauty and that we have an entire, we have generations upon generations 
who are still trying to find themselves. And, you, and, and basically what it does here is if you watch this movie and you get people watching it, and, and I can tell you, uh, having dealt with this um, with clients, with women, and just seeing it in my family, because both sides of my family are from Louisiana, so colorism is a major issue. And so here's the, here's the thing. So what you have to deal is you got a story, a narrative that's been written for as long as you can look back in time that beauty, uh, black is beautiful, uh, especially when it's light complected, is the narrative. Um, we're starting to see more and more of us celebrating ourselves and more dark-skinned sisters, but as a general rule, when you see movies casted, when you see commercials, when you see anything and they're putting them out there, especially in a role where the idea is that they are beautiful, meaning that somebody's attracted to them, that somebody wants to fall in love with them, they are normally of a lighter hue. And so it reinforces the idea that lighter-skinned black people are beautiful, more beautiful than dark-skinned black people. Now, here you come in this next movie where everything about this movie is black, from the director to the writers, the producers, the primary characters in the movie, uh, they even get to kill off a bunch of white people in the beginning of the movie. It's just black. And then the soundtrack is just black and deep and spiritual and, I mean, moving. I mean, some part has got you jumping. Some part has got you thinking. Some part has got you crying. It's there. And then you still sell into this narrative. This is the time. This was the perfect opportunity for a casting director or the primary director of the movie to say, man, we're going to go out and we're going to put a beautiful black woman, even though she may be heavy, you know, and the thing in there. And, and the, we're going to celebrate women, black women, of whether you're heavy, whether you, you, you're big boned, whether whatever. We need to celebrate the beauty of these women because they are beautiful. Everybody isn't meant to look alike, first and foremost. Everybody needs to be who they are. Now, I don't believe in being unhealthy. But at the same time, I don't think everybody's going to be a 6, 7, 8, I mean a 6, 8, or 10, uh, or a 12. To me, all of those, uh, you know, fall in that, you know, smaller category. Some people might not consider that for a 12, but hey, that's them. Now, you start getting in 16, 18, 20, that's a little heavy, but I'm more worried about your health than how you look, because if you're okay with how you look, I'm good with you, because I've seen some beautiful, thick sisters. And that thing is, they come in all colors. And the thing is, you know, um, over the course of my life, I've dated all colors. Um, and I've never been pulled one way or another. I mean, I just see you. And if you, you know, if the chemistry is there, we move on it. Um, but look, we get, here's this thing. So imagine that this narrative is running. I'm trying to get there. Give me some, give, give me, give me a little attitude. Imagine that there's this narrative that's constantly fed. Everything you look, commercials, every all the movies and everything like that, the lighter complected women getting all the play, you know. You know, big ups to people like Issa Rae and stuff like that that are getting their getting their time in the uh limelight in the sun. And you know, it's 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 beautiful to see stuff like that. But for the most part you're getting all this other stuff out there. So then here we go. And here comes another movie and it's totally black. And it's a chance. And what happens? You know how you keep getting bombarded with these ideas that lighter complected women are be more beautiful than black black complected women? Well, here we go. We're going to reinforce that again. When we have a perfect opportunity in something that's all about us to sit up and finally sit up and say, let's put a beautiful black woman in this role. Let's put someone who is closer to the character, even though this is a fictional thing. Let's find us a beautiful, thick sister put up in there and still make this work. Because, see, the idea is because she's playing a love interest of a main character, she's got to be beautiful. And the idea is she can't be beautiful and dark or she can't be beautiful and thick. And the truth of the matter is she can be both. And the, and the idea is you can't keep selling that to our people and not seeing the danger and the damage. But here it goes. So, so what people are going to come around and say is, well, Idris was darker than the actual Rufus Buck. 
his character wasn't accurate. Very few characters were anywhere close to being accurate. So it's, it's not simply about the accuracy. It's about what you choose to present and why. And I have an issue with Ildris' character. And it's the flip side because it's, it's not reverse colorism. It's the play into the stereotype. The most ruthless person in the movie is who? Rufus Buck, the darkest person in the movie. The idea that darker skinned black men are more ruthless, more dangerous, more lethal than lighter skinned black men. There are studies. When I'm looking at uh, the work I do in criminology, penology, when I look at what I'm doing with uh, studies on the uh, school to prison pipeline, mass incarceration, all these things, the numbers I look at, darker skinned black men get lighter, I mean, get more heftier sentences for the same crimes with the same grading scale that you grade uh, offenders with of, of, of their lighter skin counterparts. So, so two black men, one light, one dark, the darker is more likely to get a more heftier sentence. Um, Norm Stamper, um, a former white police chief in San Diego and Seattle, uh, some time ago broke away uh, and wrote a book called Breaking Rank. And anybody that understands organized uh, stuff like the military or police departments or anything where there's official order and hierarchy and a code, to break rank means to break out of the code and to violate the code and to expose those within. So breaking rank for Norm Stamper was a book about him writing about his life as a in the in, in, as a police officer all the way up to being a police chief in two different cities. And one of the things he says is that while white police officers will not admit it, they are afraid of black men. And he said, "Here's the better here here's here's what's more important: the bigger and the darker they are." the more they are feared. He said is it is an irrational fear, but it is a real fear. And so here we go. That so in other words, that's just another stereotype played into. Okay, the most ruthless person in the movie has to be dark. And you know, in order for the woman who is the center of the stars attention as far as a love interest has to be light I mean probably the most uh, gruesome violation of this doesn't happen in this movie it happens in the biopic of Nina Simone where Zoe Saldana is drawn in and uh, puts on dark face and a prosthetic nose to widen her nose to play uh, Nina Simone uh, when there are so many black sisters more capable, first thing pops into my mind is Lauren Hill. Uh, and I think that we have to be aware of this. And I talk about the power of media a lot because we tend to underestimate it. But media writes a narrative. Media has the power to program. Media has the ability to reinforce programming. And so when you start to talk about how you cast people and the role you place them in and how many people are going to see it and how much gravity is going to be get, get, uh, placed into it, then you have to be uh, willing to hold the people who look like us, who are marketing it as something for us, we have to hold them accountable. Again, I like the movie, but if we're going to delve deeper off into it, then we have to be willing to be honest about it. Could it have been done better? What was the reasoning? You have to ask yourself, okay, it was fictional, but what was the reasoning knowing who Mary Fields was to go that far beyond and, and, and away from the original characters? Now, in order, you know, like again, nobody in the movie is being depicted accurately. But there are some issues with the inaccuracies, not just with Mary Fields, which is the obvious, but like I pointed out with Rufus Buck, that is something. Something else that I found real interesting as a side note in doing the research on these, uh, you know, 
cowboys, as, as they're called, um, is that there was a lot of mixed race blacks out there. I mean, almost every character I looked up in this movie was not 100% black. They were mixed. Uh, a great deal of them mixed with uh, uh, different tribal Indians or Native Americans, I guess is the more uh, proper way to refer to them now, but mixed with uh, Native American, there was a lot of that, and a lot of white and black mixing. Uh, but so, you know, and I know that we are at this point now where we're really rejecting and pushing the things a lot away, but we need to look at it. If we're going to be accurate. We got to be accurate and look at it because the story is being told. And in the, in the accuracy of the genetic makeup is a story that we need to understand. We need to understand how we got all of these different hues. We need to understand why we have all these different hair textures. We need to understand you know, how things come about. We need to find the connectivity of our heritage because it's more complex than we would like it to seem. Everybody want to just go back to the Nile Valley civilization. We don't want to go back to Kemet. We just all want to be from Kemet. And that's not the reality. We are from different places and we've taken different journeys to get where we're at. And we need to be aware of the total journey. We need to maintain an awareness of our blackness and, and our connectivity and our Afrocentricity because that's how we're going to be judged. You know, I knew someone, well, I still know him. I don't deal with him too much anymore, but I knew someone that was more focused on their 3% Irish blood than they were on their 80% Afro, uh, African blood. And it just goes to show where we, uh, where we have lost ourselves and how we're trying to find ourselves in anything but ourselves. And so my whole thing with this is, that I hope something good comes out of it. Like, for instance, now that we, we have a, an entire audience who's seen this movie and enjoyed it, uh, from what I can tell, most people enjoyed it. Now they know the names of these characters. I think within the next few years is the time to come out with movies that depict the real lives, the real lives of these characters so that people get to know who we were, how much of a role we played in blazing the trails of the West, uh, you know, and I think it's important that people realize that we have had our hands on everything. And my thing is, again, I have nothing against light-skinned sisters. Uh, I've had a few um, over, over the course of my life. Uh, I just think that it's important that we accurately depict the expanse of our beauty when it comes to our women and the expanse of our nature when it comes to our men. Black, dark-skinned men can be just as gentle as light-skinned men. They can be just as considerate. They can be just as romantic. They can be just as gentle. And that's the beauty of it, that we are who we are in ourselves and we develop in ourselves. And it's, it's not what's on the outside that's ultimately going to matter. It's what we can develop on the inside. And no one can look at my skin color and tell me what type of man I am. That has to come out in the way I behave, in the way I carry myself, in the way that I speak, in the way that I handle my wife, in the way that I manage my relationship with my children, in the way that I manage my business, and on down the line. It has to be represented in action and in behavior. You can't look at me and tell you. And even in some of the external things that aren't a part of my natural genetic makeup, like I have a lot of um, tattoos. You can't look at me and judge and think, okay, he, he has a tattoo, he's, he's a thug, he's, he's uneducated, and, and a bunch of other things. You, got, you have to understand that. I love the fact that I have tattoos because what it does is it puts me in front of people who want to automatically judge me. And then two minutes into the conversation, they realize that I'm nothing like they thought. And so now I don't care about you judging me because I don't really give a crap. But I do care about how you're going to judge all my little brothers that come behind me that may look something like me, whether it's the tattoos or whatever it is. I want you to res I want you to be able to respect, respect them and let them in through their actions reveal to you who they are, not you propose something uh, uh, as the old saying goes, judge, the, judge a book by its cover. With that being said, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. 
Uh, I just wanted to drop that in there. Don't forget, if you haven't shown love and shown some support, now's the time to do it. Look in the description box and uh, find out how you, how you can support the work we do at the Odyssey Project and make it happen. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. A fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage. Uh, initiative and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.